Let's go to the Newsmaker line. We talk college football, San Diego State heading out on the road to go play at New Mexico State. Rocky Long with us, our Talk to the Aztecs segment. I don't care if your record's 0-3, Rocky. What you and that coaching staff did during that bye week to get this team focused, cranked up, you played 46 minutes of hellacious football against Oregon State. I just You may have saved the season, whether you realize it or not. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I thought the kids did a good job of getting ready, and they uh, fought their butts off till the very end, and we made some critical errors at the end and didn't win the game. So there's no celebrating. There's no moral victories. We just got to build on that and hopefully can win this week. You know, Coach, I know you're not a moral victory guy. I can tell that. But, um, you know, with the first three games and sitting here, do you kind of in a way look at it as, okay, that's our preseason. We're now going into conference play. I got to believe that everybody goes into a season saying we want to win our conference championship. The rest of the way, it's all Mountain West. How do you feel going in? And is now it, it almost a, a new start of a new season? Well, I, you'd like to look at it that way, and I think we're trying to look at it that way. I, I think that uh, we actually played like a football team last Saturday night. We played with energy. We made some plays. They, you know, as I said earlier, the kids were trying extremely hard to get things done, and now uh, it was very disappointing that we lost. So you're always concerned about how they're going to come back emotionally from that. We play a team this week that is 0-4. We're 0-3. Both teams are desperate for victories. I, I think both teams will play extremely hard. I think that if we can win this game, I think we got a good shot at the conference championship. If we don't win this game, I think we're going to be fighting a confidence battle all the way through. Uh, Rocky, talk about Quinn Kaler. I really thought he managed the game very well. Obviously, he got enormous pressure right at the tail end, and, and it probably should have eaten the football through a bad pass trying to make a play. But has he taken the strides you wanted from a quarterback this young with this uh, less experience? Well, I, I thought Quinn played, like you said, extremely well, all the way up until about the last two minutes and 40 seconds, and, and that was a kid trying to make a play when you probably shouldn't be making a play there. Just uh, try to get as much as you can, punt it away, and let the defense try to win the game for you. But uh, I thought he played well. I thought, like you said, he managed the game very well. Hopefully he's going to build on that, that interception, see through. It's uh, not going to ruin his confidence. I, I think this game is critical for us, for our confidence level, for us getting ready to go into the conference schedule and and obviously both teams are desperate. You know, Coach, staying along those same lines, when a starting quarterback gets injured, goes out, the backup like we talked a week ago, it's easy for a guy to come off the bench, no expectations to play well. Then he gets his first start and really does well. How do you move forward now? You know, you always kind of say a guy doesn't lose his job to an injury, but when a guy's playing well, how do you handle that the rest of the way? Well, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We don't have to worry about that right now. Uh, Adam Dingwell's back is still bothering him. I watched him a little bit the other day throwing, and every time he throws, you can tell it's hurting his back. He doesn't have the normal velocity on the ball that he normally does. So I, I would guess that even if Quinn has trouble this week, Chad Jeffries would be the guy going in because Adam's not well. And uh, we hope uh, Quinn does extremely well, and then we'll have to worry about that battle later on. I hope he plays well this week and we win the game. Rocky Long with us. Talk to the Aztecs as they get ready to go to New Mexico State today, play there tomorrow night. Defense really rallied. That looked like vintage Rocky in your face defense. I was so impressed with King Holder, the cornerback. He made such a jump from the bye week to, to be in everywhere where the ball was. Did he get a gold star? <laughs> I thought he played as well as he's ever played. And uh, we were playing against some quality receivers and a great quarterback. So. There was a lot of one-on-one -on -one action out there, and we can only play defense our way if we were able to match up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And I thought the corners played pretty well. They've gotten a whole lot better since the first week. Uh, we got to continue that progress because we've decided that the only way we can play around here is to be aggressive, and that puts those guys in a bind at times, but we're going to be aggressive every week. Coach, when you, you look at a team, as you'd mentioned before, New Mexico State coming in, has them won, struggling, both teams looking for a victory. When the guys are watching film and they're looking at their opponents, coming off facing a, a really good team like Oregon State, obviously you're going to see maybe not the same talent level. How do you make sure guys don't get maybe you know a little overconfident to say that, oh, we just got to show up and we can beat this team? I think that's our biggest concern as coaches. Uh, we're counting on a maturity level on our team. Obviously, we've pointed out that they've moved the ball on everybody. They've struggled on defense some, but they've moved the ball on everybody. They, they, you know, gain yards. They throw it well. They catch it well. 
Uh, I think uh, the desperation that we have and the desperation they have is, is critical to both teams. We've explained it all to them. We've shown them what they can and can't do. Uh, mistakes make a big difference in a game like this. Uh, that's all been explained to them. But as you remember, as a player, you got to do it yourself. They got to get yeah. themselves ready to play. It's hard for a coach to do that. Rocky, you went into Albuquerque and fixed a downtrodden New Mexico Lobos program up the road there at Las Cruces. I mean, they've got a good basketball program. They've been unable to do anything uh, in terms of resurrecting the football program. Why is it so hard at New Mexico State? I think mostly it's population. Uh, your recruiting areas are so far away from home. I mean, you got to go to the Dallas Fort Worth area or you got to go to L.A. Uh, because there's not enough people in the close proximity for you to recruit local kids. You can't get enough talent that way. And a lot of people don't want to go that far away from home or they don't want to go to a city of that size unless you have a reputation of being a great football team. I think it's a very difficult job. You know, one other sidebar to that, we saw Bill Snyder fix Kansas State. We saw what Mike Riley did at Oregon State. It can be done. I, I think it can be done, too, and I, you're talking about a couple really good coaches. I, I think uh, Bill Snyder is one of those guys that has magic. I, I'm not sure uh, Mike Riley is one of those guys with magic, but Bill Snyder is one of those guys with magic. If you can get Kansas State to the position where you can win a Big 12 championship at Kansas State, you've got magic. Good stuff. Rocky, good luck in New Mexico State. I think this is the beginning of the run. Good luck in Las Cruces. We'll talk to you next week. All right, guys. Thanks a lot.